Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another pen video and this is an inks comparison video. This is Venustus inks comparison number one video. So I think with that, let's go and swallow up some of these inks. So I get a lot of questions on how I do these ink videos. So I decided I would add this to the front of each of the ink videos. I put links in the descriptions, but I know some of you watch this on TVs or mobile devices, so you don't get to see this. So first off, the paper is the number one question that I get asked. What paper do I use for these ink comparison videos? So this is the original Tomoe River. This is 52 GSM and it is the white, not the cream, the white. Where possible, I try to go for the white because the cream can actually change the color of the ink just a little bit. So this is Tomoe River 52 GSM in the white. Um, a lot of people get confused as well because I have what looks to be a grid on this page and it's actually an Oxford Optic pad. These are the pads that I actually use when I'm writing my uh, writing samples for pen reviews or in my currently ink. So they have these little squares up here. Uh, I just use that because it's a good guide for me. When I put this very thin sheet of Tomoe River over, I can actually see squares. So it helps me write a little bit sort of straight uh, on the page. Not always, but sometimes it does. The, the other thing that I also have is a I have a bottle of water, plain water, and uh, I dip my nib in here. So for consistency, I use the same fountain pen, or <laughs> I guess it's not a fountain pen. It's using a fountain pen nib, though. This is a 3D printed pen from William Shakur in the UK. So he prints this uh, material 3D and it has a number eight size Bok nib which I can unscrew and you can see there so it is just a dip pen holder for a number eight size Bok nib and the idea is I want to have consistency with the writing sample so I use this I dip it in the ink uh, I write and then I will dip it in here and I will rinse the nib off several times and I will dry it. And then at that point, uh, I will then go on to do the next ink swatch and the next writing sample. So there you have it. That's uh, how I do my ink swatches. So I just wanted to show you uh, that here. Now on to the ink comparison video. So the first ink here today, we are going to swab up is an orange ink from Venustus and it's Arancio Tarocco. So the first ink here, we'll do an ink swatch. And I have to say, I do like orange inks. And this is a little bit more on the paler side of orange that I'm typically used to. I, I typically like a little bit more of a darker orange. Now I'm gonna do a second pass over the top half of this ink swatch, just to show the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib, and a broad and a narrow writing nib. So this is Venvistus. And it is Arancio. And it's Tarocco. But I do have to say that that's a nice orange color and it actually does remind me of very much so of um, Pilot Awashizuku Yuyaki in terms of the lightness of that color. Quite a nice uh, orange colored ink there. It will be interesting to see how this one dries. The next ink we'll swab up here is Venustus and it is Rosa Canina. So we'll do another ink swatch here. And I am already liking this red. I, I typically like more punchy 
vibrant reds. So something like Diamine Poppy Red or Diamine Wild Strawberry. And I'd have to say that this is a little bit more like Diamine Wild Strawberry. So I'll do a second half uh, pass there on the top half. Just to show the difference between a wet and a dry or a broad and a narrow writing nib. So this is uh, Venustus. Or Venvistus, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And it's Rosa Canina. But that is, is a very nice pastel red. Very, very similar to Diamine Wild Strawberry. Now, I do not know who actually makes the Venvistus inks. Um, there are obviously a handful, probably maybe a dozen or more uh, ink producers around the world, ink producers around the world, and it's possible it could be Diamine that are producing these. I suspect it probably isn't though, but I'd have to say that that, that is uh, very, very close to Diamine Wild Strawberry. The next ink here is Venvistus, and it's Aqua de Spargi. So this should be a lovely turquoise uh, cerulean blue. So we'll do another ink swatch here. And you can see here that this is a beautiful blue. It's been a blue that I've been using for some time now uh, from Venvistus. Uh, beautiful blue. The second pass over the top half, show the difference between a wet or broad and a, a dry or a narrow writing nib. So this is Venustus. And it is Aqua di Spargi. Which for me is a very, very nice. Uh, cerulean blue turquoise colored ink uh, it reminds me of uh, very much of pelican edelstein topaz maybe a bit lighter though i would say but that is a very nice uh, color maybe a little bit like diamine aqua blue as well i think that one might be a little bit similar the next ink here is venustus and it's fumo di londra which is actually London Fog, or Fog of London. So we'll do another ink swatch here. And this is actually an ink that I've been writing with a lot lately. It is an ink that really does interest me a lot. And I'm not normally one for lighter greys. We'll do a second pass here over the top half, show the difference between a wet and a dry, or a broad and a narrow writing nib so this is uh, Venustus and it is Fumo di Londra or Fog of London and I do actually have a Visconti Homo sapiens London Fog uh, which has a lovely sort of grey and blue colour to it and then the last thing I have here in this series is Venustus Vinaccia. And this is a purple ink. And I, uh, from the ink swatches online, I think it's been a very dark purple. So it will be very interesting to see how this one turns out. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And yeah, that is quite a dark purple. And a lot of these dark purples actually dry even darker darker as well when you uh, leave them to dry so it will be interesting to see uh, i like the the light side of that so we'll do a second pass over the top half to show the difference between a wet or a broad and a uh, narrow or a dry writing nib so this is a venustus just actually realized i actually missed a tee off on this one Venvistus, and it is a uh, Vinaccia.
But that is quite a uh, nice uh, purple ink. Uh, it's not as dark that I maybe thought it was, looking at some of the online uh, swatches. So I think let's take a look at these inks now that they have dried a little bit more. So we have the first ink here, which is Venustus Arancio Tarocco. And I have to say, this is a really nice orange ink. So you can definitely see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib. The writing sample is obviously from a wet writing nib, so it's actually showing quite a lovely sort of darker orange, I would say. This still does, whilst dry, remind me of Pelican Edel Sign Yuyaki a lot. Uh, very, very nice uh, colour, for sure. Um, you definitely see the difference between a, a wet and a dry. You can see shading going on here as well in the pooled area. Is there any sheen? Now, you can sometimes get sheen on uh, an orange ink, and I want to say that it's trying to sheen around the edges. It's really not doing so. Uh, just it, It's trying to sheen. So, uh, for me, it's a nice orange ink, but... Uh, if you're getting an orange ink because you want a sheening orange ink, then I would maybe look at Sailor Kin Makusai, or if you really can get it, Sailor Gentle Apricot or Apricot, because that is uh, certainly, that does sheen more, uh, in my experience, compared to the, the newer version of Sailor Kin Makusai. The next ink here is uh, Venustus Rosa Canine, and Canina. And uh, again, this is a very nice red ink. Uh, I think it really does look very similar to Diamine Wild Strawberry. So if you can't get the Venusus ink and you want something similar, certainly check out Diamine Wild Strawberry. Can you see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib or a broad and a narrow? Yes, you can. Uh, you can also see some shading going on here in the pooled area. Uh, is there any sheen? Now, I want to say it's, again, trying to sheen. It's just not quite there yet. Now, you can get red sheening inks. Uh, if you really want a red sheening ink, uh, check out Pilot Iwashizuku Mamiji. has a beautiful gold shine or sheen to, to that, that ink. So gold over red. Uh, if you would like something a little bit more on the pinkish side, you could try Pilot Oroshizuku Satsuji. And that, again, uh, it's a very bright hot pink, but with a sort of gold sheen to it. So, unfortunately, no sheen here on the Venustus Rosa Canina, likewise on also the previous Arancio Taroko. The next thing here uh, is uh, becoming a favourite of mine, Venustus Aqua di Spargi. Beautiful, beautiful turquoise, cerulean blue colour, uh, lovely. Reminds me of the waters of the uh, Caribbean. Uh, beautiful ink. Um, it's very similar to Pelican Edelstein Topaz. Maybe a little bit lighter, perhaps. Uh, can you see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib? Yes, you can. Uh, can you see shading here? You can. Certainly around the pooled areas. The writing sample is a little bit more uh, muted, although you can see on some of the downstrokes some shading going on there. Now, are you going to see any sheen? Now, uh, again, I want to say it's trying to sheen. I'm not really seeing much sheen. Maybe a little bit around the edges here, there's a little bit of red sheen going on. Not a huge amount. Uh, it's not something you're going to notice in, in a writing sample, but there is a slightest amount of sheen there, but it's almost not worth talking about. The next thing here is uh, Venustus at Fumo di Londra, or um, Fog of London, or London Fog. Uh, it's actually quite a nice grey ink, and it's one I have been writing with a lot lately. Uh, this is a very beautiful grey. I'm not normally into light greys. I typically prefer dark greys. Uh, I don't really know why. Uh, I, I just think maybe a lot of the lighter greys are a little bit more graphite in colour. And if I wanted that, I'd probably use a pencil maybe. 
you can get graphite in very dark gray as well, obviously. But uh, I typically go for something like Diamine Earl Gray. That's a nice dark gray. Uh, but this uh, Venustus Fumo di Londra uh, is actually quite a nice gray. Uh, you can definitely see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib there. Uh, you can see a little bit of shading around the pooled areas. Not as much as perhaps the Aqua di Spargi. Can you see any sheen there? No, you cannot. Uh, this is a little bit more of a, a bluish grey. Uh, you can just get grey greys. You can get um, light greys. You can get dark greys. You can get bluish greys. You can get greenish greys. I'd say this is a little bit more on the bluish side of grey. But it's still a grey colour. Very nice colour. One I'm actually writing a lot with lately. And then the last thing here is Venustus Vinaccia. And this is a purple colored ink. Uh, from a lot of the ink swatches I've seen online, this has been almost a black. It, it's been so dark that I really, really thought about not getting this ink. Um, I wanted to pick up an ink though. And I there were a few other colors that I didn't think would go well. And I thought I would try this. I do like purple inks as well. So can you see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib? You can a bit. It's a little bit lighter purple here than in the wetter or broader area. Uh, the writing sample definitely is more of a, a dark purple to almost a black. Uh, and, and typically that's how a lot of the darker purples will come out in writing samples. Uh, I... I think sort of think about maybe diamine grape, which again uh, the writing sample is is almost like a black. So uh, I think that's that's really the sort of colours that you're going to see there. Um, now, is there any shading going on? There's a little bit of shading, not a huge amount though. You can see it again around these pulled areas around the edges. Now, is there any sheen? I really want to say it's it's trying to sheen a lot. But it's not quite there. I am seeing lighter sort of surface sheen there. But it's not really like changing to a gold colour. So yes, there is some sheen there. But you're not really going to notice it much. That said, if you inked this up in a pen and left it for several months. And then came back to it. Or even maybe a week depending on, on how uh tight your your cap seal is on the pen you might find that first sentence or two will have sheen on it because the water will have evaporated from uh some of the ink and and that will concentrate it more and that will certainly provide a little bit more sheen so uh possibility i think you could get sheen out of this ink it's just really going to depend on the circumstances this is Tomoe River paper, so if any of these inks are really going to sheen, I would expect it to sheen on uh, this paper. So there you have it. That's my uh, Venustus ink comparison number one video. If there are any of these inks that you like, then do let me know in the comments below. Likewise, uh, if there are any other inks either from Venustus or from any other brands that you would like me to check out, then also do let me know in the comments below. So that's my Venusus Inks comparison number one video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.